Hey, it's Jackie and welcome back to my channel for another bridal look. Last week I did Ariana Grande's wedding makeup tutorial. It was so much fun and I love the 60s so I thought I would do another iconic bridal look which is Priscilla Presley on her wedding day. So I hope you guys enjoy this very bold look. This is probably the most makeup I think I've worn on my channel at least in the past while. So if you enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more pop culture videos. And let's get started with this makeup. Start of course with your skincare routine. I've already applied my toner, serum, moisturizer, eye cream, and I'm topping up with the Too Faced Hangover Primer. And Priscilla wore full coverage foundation. I went with this Too Faced Born This Way foundation in the shade Porcelain, and I'm stippling this all over the skin, down the neck. Now for a transformation, this is definitely more inspired than like me becoming her because we have very different face shapes. I have round, larger cheekbones, a smaller jaw and chin, so I'm really just trying to get an accurate makeup look here, but I did brighten up my chin and jaw as well as under the eyes with concealer to brighten up, add more dimension, and this is the Born This Way concealer in the shade Swan. This whole makeup look is super dramatic on the eyes, we have dark brows, we're gonna use pink on the lips, so it looks a bit flat if I don't do any contouring, so I went with cream contour to round out my chin as well as under the cheekbones, and I decided to bring this through the sides of my face to make it look a bit longer and less round. And while we're here, I'm gonna use a touch of the Rare Beauty Soft Touch Blush in the shade Grace. Just one dot on the cheeks and blend upwards. I really love these cream blushes, they are super bold, I like to apply some on my finger from the applicator and then pat into the skin. Also added a tiny bit over the nose for some color. In some photos of Priscilla she looked more contoured and bronze, especially into the 70s, but for this bridal look on the skin I'm not going to add a lot more bronzer here, I'm attempting to make my nose look a little bit more square through the bridge. And Priscilla has such a cute nose, I couldn't get my tip to look quite as upturned and pixie-like, but the base of her nose is quite straight, so I added that in there. Of course, contour however you feel confident. Even though we've gone full coverage, adding in this touch of luminosity to the skin makes it appear a little bit less um, made up and very youthful still. I think I skipped powder by accident here. I would definitely recommend to use a bit of powder so that the makeup doesn't transfer and last longer, but go with a light hand so you don't lose the skin-like sheen. For brows, they were kind of the comma brow style, so they were fairly thin and round through the tail and definitely quite dark. I'm not going to pluck my brows here, I can't get the exact effect, but I'm going to create a similar shape just within my fuller brows with this Revlon Colorstay Brow Pencil in the shade Soft Black. And then with the Too Faced Concealer, I'm going over my natural brow hairs at the bottom, cleaning up the shape. Obviously this doesn't look super natural, but I wanted to give a similar brow shape, at least from afar. If you're new to my videos, I like to do a subtle transformation, so I still look like me, but I do try to incorporate similar contouring and like an eyebrow shape, but never to a point where it's really, really harsh. So with something like brows, I'm not going to glue them down or do anything like that, but I am going to pop in some light blue eye contacts. I thought it was a unique bridal look because it was very bold on the brow bone with a matte white shade. So I went looking for the um, KVD Beauty white pot, but they were sold out. So I got this Sephora crayon and it worked really well. I applied a bit and then blended out and it was a great base. This eye look is very stark through the initial steps, but I swear it'll all come together once we put the lashes and liner on. We've built up this product, blended to the end of the brow bone, and I'm still using the Sephora collection here. This is a matte white shadow to set the brow bone. In some pictures, it looked like there was a bit of a pastel tint to the white around the crease, like maybe a pastel purple, even blue. It's kind of hard to tell with older photos, but I decided to go with this pastel pinky purple through the crease and blend into the white. For all over the lid, I went with Charlotte Tilbury's Eyes to Mesmerize in Amber Gold, and this used to be called Bet, so I bought it twice thinking it was a different shadow, but it's nice because um, the Amber Gold is a little bit more on the bronze side than a yellow gold. I really like the texture of these, but I did think I was going to get a bit more sheen to the lid, so I ended up layering another product on a bit later on, but I like to blend these in with a tiny brush so I have some precision. Take a rose gold or slightly magenta eyeshadow and apply to the inner and outer portion of the eye. I'm not sure why this was pulling so copper on camera when I first applied it. It's more of a magenta-y rose shade. 
And I'm gonna leave it like this so you can see the placement really easily. And then with a matte gray on a smaller brush, I'm gonna draw in a crease shape, keeping it heavier on the outer corner and kind of tilted upwards. I'm just looking at this photo here and that's why I did that, but I modified it slightly for my eye shape since I do have more lid space. For blending, I go pretty gentle. I go back and forth, cleaning my brush in between as I go because these shades together like can look muddy. Like I don't think that they're the best um, shade combo, but then in the end it does all go together well. And I'm gonna leave this slightly unblended because we're gonna do big eyeliner and lashes that's gonna cover a lot of the shadow. So if it's too blended, we'll lose some of the dimension there. Perfect Diary eyeliner covering up quite a bit of that shadow detail so you only really get a touch of it and right in the inner corner and we have one more line to do underneath the bottom lash line so looking forward where your pupil is create a straight line and then follow the eye shape giving a bit of room and create a smaller thinner line underneath the initial wing. Here you can see a close-up of her makeup and you can even go bolder with the liner but I felt like this was already very bold for my taste so I left it here. And you can use a stark white eyeliner pencil to really open up the eyes. I went with a slightly off-white shade through the waterline and drag this between the two black liner strokes as well as under the tear duct and this will clean it up and adds a bit more contrast. Let's add a full set of lashes. These are from House of Lashes and Sephora and I used duo glue and popped them on. Now let's pile on the mascara on the top and bottom lashes. I was so excited for this pink lip combo. I used the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Medium Lip Liner. I overlined my top lip slightly and kept my Cupid's bow still in a V. Her lip line was less blended out than I'm gonna do. I wanted to modernize it slightly. And I picked up this nice pink shade from Urban Decay. It has a bit of a purple bubblegum pink look to it. Also, can't forget the pop culture password. Comment, I'd love a six tier yellow sponge cake right now in the comments below. Finally, like I said in the beginning, I was hoping that the eyeshadow would have more of a sheen to it, so I went in with the Charlotte Tilbury Spotlight Highlighter and applied this directly on the lid. This does have a metallic shift to it. I love it on my nose for a highlight as well, but if you really want the pop on the lid to be the main feature of this look, I would set with a pigment. I personally love the texture of the sheen from the Charlotte Tilbury wand, but you can only really see this when the light hits. So if you really want that three-dimensional look, I would go with a bolder eyeshadow on top. Um, I'm just mentioning this because when I was taking my recreation photo, I really layered the Charlotte Tilbury wand several more times to get the effect I wanted. And about this hair look, not my best work honestly. It's a wig and I couldn't use heat on it, so I couldn't add that cute curl that Priscilla had. And you can get her iconic fragrances today as well. I bought this one on screen, but it hasn't come to me yet, so I will let you guys know how I like it over on Instagram. And be sure to check out my 60s style merch if you love the 60s. This crew neck and mug, as well as this gray t-shirt, are some of my favorites from the Vintage Vibes collection. And if you're looking for another bridal look, check out the Ariana Grande makeup tutorial. Or if you're looking for another bold 60s look, this cut crease is one of my favorites. So check that out and I will see you guys in my next video.